Hello, I hope you are fine. Child of God, good morning. Today, if the world were going to end today, what would you do? If the Lord were coming today, if today were the rapture, what would you do? It's important that we ask ourselves these questions because it is true that we are not here forever. Whether we are talking about the parousia, which is the ultimate end of all things, or our own end, which ends in death, as the year draws to an end, the church reminds us of the importance of preparing for the end. But how do we prepare for the end? The story is told about a monk who was working sometime in his garden and someone came to him and says, if now the world is going to end and the Lord is coming right now, what are you going to do? And then the monk answered, I'll just keep working in my garden. And the person was surprised. The truth is, child of God, the best way to be prepared for the coming of the Lord is to just be about what the Lord has assigned you to do. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to panic. Just do what you have been assigned to do. The Lord wants to meet us where he has put us, to, fruit, to be fruitful and multiply. Child of God, you see, there are so many prophets these days who are spending their time threatening people and, you know, putting fear in people all the time about the rapture, about the end of time and all that. The truth is God doesn't approve of such prophets. In today's first reading, taken from 2 John chapter 1a, then verses 4 to 9, St. John writes to the church and he talks to them about the fact that what is really important is that we love one another. Every other doctrine is useless because why John was saying this was that at the end of the first century, by the time he was writing this letter, there were a group of Greek philosophers called the Ducetists who had come into the church and began to teach all kinds of philosophies in the name of the Christian faith. One of the things they taught was that Jesus Christ could not have been in the flesh. He only appeared to have been in the flesh. God was too great for him to take on human flesh. So, People had to enter into a different form of spiritual life, a form of spiritual, uh, you know, it, it had to be something special. And they were teaching that, and some people began to be drawn to that. I know some people, for instance, who do many, many, many weeks and days of fasting because they are seeking spiritual enlightenment. They want to be close to God. The truth is, God doesn't require all of that from us. It might sound, sound too simple, but that's just the truth. The Bible says, all that you need to do is love one another. Love is the only thing that God really requires from us. And that's what St. John said in today's readings. He says that such people who come to threaten us with the end time, such people who come to teach us that there has to be something extraordinary for us to meet the Lord on the day of rapture, are actually the antichrist. They are imposters. They have gone so far as to deny the power in the message of Christ. And he repeats it. The message of Christ is that you love one another. And the proof that you love one another is that you keep his commandments. And he goes on to say, this commandment is not new. This word is not new. We have known it from the beginning. We have known it from when Christ was with us. All he requires from us is to love one another. He doesn't expect us to do anything extraordinary other than just loving one another. You see, someone has said once that the Christian message has not been tried and failed. It has been considered either too easy or too difficult and left untried. This is our problem in the world today. People want something extra. They want something falling down from heaven. But the truth is, God really doesn't want us to expect all that. Look at the story that we know very well of Elijah. For instance, Elijah was expecting God to come in thunder, in brimstone, and in fire. But it came in the form of a gentle breeze. This is the kind of God that we have. And in the Gospel reading of this morning, we have something that we can relate to this. Jesus says that in the time of Noah and in the time of Lot, people were eating and drinking. Now, this is the other side of the equation. The fact that God expects us to just love our neighbors as ourselves as sufficient does not mean that we should relax. Because Jesus says that in the time of Noah, Noah was telling them, we have to be actively loving one another. We have to be doing things to show that we love one another. We can't just keep eating and drinking as if the neighbor or others don't matter but if we do the deluge will fall on us the day of catastrophe would come and that's exactly what happened both in the time of noah and in the time of lot people didn't pay attention to the need to actively love one another and of course we know the story in the case of lot there was fire and brimstone that burned down sodom and gomorrah and in the time of noah there was water that destroyed the entire earth so Jesus draws our attention this morning again to the importance of keeping ardently to his commandment, which is very simple, loving one another. It is so simple that some of us don't even want to try it. Have you ever tried to love everyone in your life? Try it, and you will see that that's all you really require to be in God's mind, to make the kingdom of heaven. Let's stop the panic messages. They are not from God. They are from the Antichrist. The Almighty God bless you today and fill your heart with love. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.